It's uh, Tuesday, the 25th of April, 2023. Um, last time we spoke, I had essentially, for all intents and purposes, finished up the empennage kit. And then uh, that was Saturday. And then uh, Sunday and Monday uh, was really about um, trying to decide how I was going to attack the wings. Uh, there are some fixtures that it's recommended that you build, although not completely necessary, at least not all of them. Um, but after calling Vans Builder Support and confirming that with a pre-punched kit, I don't need the wing stands, um, it, the, the wing will basically come out true if you build it on a flat table because everything is laser cut and pre-punched and, and whatnot. But... Uh, Talking to them and getting input from other builders, most people seem to agree that whether or not the wing stand is necessary, um, it's just a lot easier to build the wings hanging on a wing stand than it is on a flat table. You've got a little bit better access to both sides of the wing and whatnot. So I've decided to go ahead and do that. Uh, as I talk to you right now, I'm on my way back out to Lowe's and tractor supply to pick up some more uh, hardware to put those things together, not just the wing stands, but also the wing cradles um, that will hold the wings once they're assembled. Um, so that's what we're doing today. I wasn't really sure if I was gonna make a video about the construction of these things, um, but I figured why not just throw up a GoPro do some time lapse, let it run, see what it looks like. You might find it interesting, you might find it useful, or you might just skip to the next video. Having said that, uh, to all of you who are subscribed to me, thank you. To the rest of you, hey, subscribe if you wanna see more of it, and also give it a like um, if you can, if you like it. If you don't like it, just you know, move on, it's okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, the wing kits were right here. Now they're all put away over there. All the empennage parts have been put away in storage. I cleaned up this side of the uh, workshop. This place is a little bit of a mess right now because I disassembled one of the crates that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna throw some chicken wire on here and this will be sort of an upgrade to what I've been using, a plain piece of cardboard for priming. <clears throat> so throw some chicken wire on there, throw some legs on it, probably one or two supports across the middle. Down here, I've got some big four by eights and then some more two by fours. And back there, I've got a ton of scrap lumber as well. <clears throat> what I need to do is a lot of the stuff that's on this page. Down here in the bottom are the wing stands. These things go uh, are set on floor to ceiling posts, which is what those four by eights are for. Uh, I need to decide where they're going to be here in the workshop because they're pretty big. They run like a nine and a half, ten foot span. So from post to post, 114 inches. And then if you want to build both wings at the same time, like I do, you're going to have a wing stand and a wing stand. And ideally, you know, at least three feet between them the wings will be on the outboard side in the middle. That means you can get access to both sides of the wings will be working on them. I still have to figure out if I can do it on this side over here. One possibility is to get all this cleared out and do them right here in this orientation. I don't know. I, I'll do some measuring and figure it out. I'll let you know what I decide to do. The other thing that I need to build is right here these little cradles, not very big at all, um, but I'm gonna start working on building the tanks. And then ultimately, and might as well get these done now, are wing cradles. So when the wings are completed or mostly completed, they can live in here, put casters on the bottom, be able to move them out of the way. So uh, right now it's just gonna be head scratching, configuring, figuring out where, uh, where we're gonna put those, I, I'm thinking probably right there. I should still have enough room over here for uh, the flat work tables and then still be able to get lawn equipment and whatnot in here. All right, we'll see what happens. 
so this is kind of a hectic edit. Um, top left, day one. Top right, day two. Bottom left, day three. Bottom right, day four. There were six days of building this stuff. And uh, I don't know why I thought I could do it in a day. So uh, in the beginning, the top left, what you see me do is just trying to figure out where I'm going to place these posts. I've got them laid out on the floor. And then you'll see me pull down the... Um, the, the little ladder up into the up into the attic to make sure that I have adequate clearance that when this thing is put together, I can still pull that thing down without whacking the wings. Um, you see that I did get the post set and in the top right one, you see I'm using a laser level. Those things are dead on nuts level and flush. And then the lower third, uh, um, day three there, I'm fabricating the arms. Um, and I'm using uh, threaded rods so that I can fine tune the level of every one of those arms once um, there's some weight on those things. But I can tell you right now uh, that from one post to the next, from left to right, laterally across everything, everything is just perfectly plumb. And I'm amazed because this is not uh, <laughs> something that I'm accustomed to building. I also look, um, that there are basically footers. I used the four by four posts and then I, I made a two by four footer using a four by four post cap to tie it in. And then I didn't drill into my floor or do anything like that. I simply uh, used liquid nails or a version of Loctite uh, like um, construction adhesive um, that's not going to move and then same thing up on top with headers and then drilled into the ceiling joists so that thing is dead solid it took me a long time to build there was a lot of head scratching just figuring out how i wanted to do it um, and then this ultimately is not the final configuration of the workshop which you'll see later on in the wings build um, i just had to sort of swap places and put the the workbench that has all the the bench top tools on it back over in the um, other smaller bay and then run the long tables close to the garage door in the large bay um, in terms of the the setup of those wing stands i basically followed the plans um, meaning that the inside span uh, between those posts is eight feet um, and then uh, the width between the two posts, um, I made that 36 inches so that I can work on both sides of both wings at the same time. So the wings, well, you can see how the, how the arms are set up. The wings will be set outside or outboard of that thing. Um, I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. It was basically a lot of uh, fabricating those arms from... Um, some scrap uh, aluminum angle that I had on hand and then went to Lowe's and picked up some more. I bought the threaded rods um, and it turned out great, um, but it was a ton of work. Um, but I feel confident that, you know, I'll be pretty happy with it when I get to uh, hanging the wing spars on there, which by the way is coming up in just in the next few days. Um, Today is the 11th of May as I'm recording this, and um, I have completed pretty much all the prep work on the front and rear spars uh, for the wings. And so and now I will be getting into wing uh, rib prep hell. Um, it's a lot of ribs that need to be uh, flanges straightened and then fluted and then edge finishing and deburring and priming and then blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that'll take a few days probably to get done. Um, of all the things that I built here during this, um, I, I literally, you know, in the beginning of this thing, that first clip when I'm driving to Lowe's, I cut it short in the edit. But what I went on to say was, uh, you know, I'm really hoping I can get this done in one day because I want to start the wings tomorrow. And this took me six, <laughs> six days. Um and a lot of them were pretty full days. Oh my gosh. So uh, I, I've only got room for four uh, screens to go up here at once. I'm trying, I'm trying to crush, um, you know, probably 
45 to 50 hours of uh, work into this video. And um, so my suggestion is I'm, um, I'm not going to narrate this whole thing. There's going to come a point where I'm going to run out of words and just let it run. But I would really encourage you, if you got this far and you're curious about the specifics of how I built these things, according to the plans or modifications or tools that I used or whatever, just put it down in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to um, answer your questions. Um, I did take a lot of photos and I decided not to edit all that stuff in here because quite frankly, um, I'm making good progress on the wing build and I'm more interested in doing that than editing this six days worth of video about not building airplane parts. Um, Let's see what's going on here. Down in the bottom right, um, day four, I'm done with the wing stands. And so I'm working on uh, that panel down there. I'm working on building the cradle that's for the leading edge. Yeah, the leading edge and the tanks. Um, kind of one and the same in terms of the shape of them. So um, again, I followed the plans on this and... Um, I got to tell you, my least favorite tool is a jigsaw. It, that thing sucks. Uh, and so cutting out temp, you know, templates or using a rib as a template, tracing it out, leaving a little extra room so you can put some padding on there to make these cradles and then um, cutting that thing out with the jigsaw. I'm glad that that's done. I, I do not enjoy working with that tool. On the bottom left there, you see me over at the drill press. Um, that is just a really long day of cutting and drilling and tapping aluminum. So the way that I made those arms are out of, uh, one end of them, uh, the end that, um, is on the left side of the screen. That's where the, um, the inboard portion of the spar that mates up with the fuselage, that's where that end will lay. And that is pretty heavy aluminum angle that I just happen to have. It's like a quarter inch thick aluminum angle. Um, the other end is, uh, eighth inch aluminum, uh, eighth inch angle. <clears throat> but then for the brackets, um, again, it's just sort of cutting scraps and trying to figure out the geometry so that it can fit underneath that flange of the angle on top. And then the lower bracket is tapped. Um, so that I can thread that rod through uh, and I forget what size uh, threaded rod I use. I guess I could find out, but that's tapped so that that can screw in there at, you know, get it very close to level. And then the top, I just use a couple of nuts and a jam nut so that um, once it's all in there, all I have to do is take a wrench to it and it can change the distance between those two brackets and therefore change the level of that, um, that arm. Um, what else is interesting about it up on the top left, the day that I'm just trying to get this all lined out, basically, uh, you can see right now, um, up on the ceiling that I've got one header installed there. So basically I measured, um, a distance off of the edge of that, that hole in the ceiling where the, the ladder to the attic goes. Um, I think 24 inches I felt would give me enough room to be able to lower that ladder without coming anywhere near the, um, anywhere near the wing or the arms. And then once I found that point, then I dropped a, a plumb bob, marked that spot on the ceiling, dropped a plumb bob from there, made a mark on the floor that matched that, and then went 36 inches over, made another one so that I could, um, you know, match the footer to the header. And then for the other side, I measured across the floor. So once the footer was installed on one end, then I went, I found the dead center of that span, that 36 inch span on that footer. And then I measured, um, a perfect perpendicular eight feet out. And then I did the opposite on the other side. So I started from the floor where I could set the footer and then, um, made, kind of ma mapped out the spot for the footers and then climbed a ladder and then held the plumb bob so that it matched the line on the match, the mark on the floor. And then where that connected to the ceiling, that would be the mark for the header. So 
kind of worked in a U shape from the top of one side across the floor and up to the other. And it all came out, uh, really good. Uh, let's see what's going on here in screen number two fabrication, fabrication, um, that took quite a while to do and it made a mess. And I, I honestly think, um, that I did myself a disservice, um, by not wearing a mask when I was doing that. Cause I spent so much time cutting aluminum and then also cutting steel, that threaded rod, um, that I think I got a little bit in my lungs and, uh, Maybe made myself sick for a couple of days. So that was a bad idea. One of my trips to Lowe's after that, um, I did end up picking up some, uh, some can 95 masks to wear when I'm doing that kind of stuff. Cause that was stupid of me. Um, bottom right, still working on making those cradles. Um, so basically once I get them all put together, um, you probably noticed it in my cradles that I used for the horizontal stabilizer. I've got some inexpensive big sheet of indoor outdoor carpet that I cut into strips and use that to pad it. And then I don't go crazy using a spray adhesive or carpet tape to hold it on to the work. I simply just use some blue tape and you wrap it around a few times and it's good. Uh, up on the top left there, I'm getting to cutting the posts. Um, and, um, I know that they say, what is it? Cut twice or, uh, measure twice and cut once. I've always been a big fan of, uh, measure three times and cut twice. And that is what I did, uh, on this project. So, <laughs> um, when we get into the day five work that will be coming up at the end of this, because I only have four panels to show here, the day five work is when I build the, the cradles for the wings. So the big cradles that once they're kind of have taken shape, they'll live in there on a set of casters and the plans call for a two by four. And I've said, well, guess what? I have a, a miscut, uh, four by four. That would be a great, a spine for this thing. And so, they, uh, the four by fours, um, I did have to go back and get another one since I cut one eight inches too short, like a moron or no, sorry, not eight, eight inches too short. I cut it three quarters of an inch too short. Um, Man, what a goof, but I don't know. Now I have some extra hunks of uh, four by four laying around that I can use for anything. Um, let's see. I'll tell you what, man, this was a lot of work. Um, it, it, for a moment there, you might've noticed that I had my, in the top left, I had my DRDD2 sitting on that footer, basically, I just wanted some weight to sit on that footer while that adhesive was, you know, just getting some extra pressure to hold that adhesive in place while it, you know, set. Um, it was kind of a fun building project. And, um, I think maybe just because it turned out so well, because I was really intimidated by trying to, uh, do this on the top left there. That's where you see me starting to make the measurements to go across to the other side and work my way to the top again on the whole cut, uh, measure, uh, three times and cut twice. When I made this measurement all the way across and, and place the footer, um, when I was measuring the center of the footer on the other side, somehow or another, I marked the center an inch off of center and set the thing. I didn't glue it to the floor, but I, I marked it. And then I went up to the ceiling and I did hang the header. And then when I started setting the footers, when I, I noticed the error before I actually, um, glued the footer to the floor, thankfully. And, uh, so I had to go back up top and move that thing one inch over and I can't believe it, but even after that mistake and moving it an inch and everything like that, still everything turned out completely square. So, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. But anyways, uh, wood's much more forgiving than, than metal when it comes to building things. So, uh, yeah, 
I think that I'm kind of running out of stories to tell about building this stuff. My advice would be um, look at other people's work. Um, I really, you know, not, not being a carpenter, um, you know, I'd done framing in high school, but that was more than 30 years ago. Not being a carpenter, um, I was wondering how I was going to set these uh, post to the floor without going into the concrete. I definitely didn't want to get a hammer drill and do uh, any of that kind of stuff. And it's because of watching uh, Ryan Fly's video and his wing fixtures that I saw what he did, um, which is this idea with the footer and construction adhesive that worked out. Um, and then in terms of making the, the one thing that I may end up changing, I don't know. Um, we'll see is uh, the height of those support arms. Um, also, again, I kind of referred to the height that Ryan uh, set them. And uh, it looks like he set them kind of tall. And I kind of worked around it. And I thought, actually, you know, I, I, I might kind of like that. Um, my biggest concern was setting them too low because I don't have anything mocked up. I didn't want to accidentally set them too low and that the trailing edge would be really close to the ground. Um, well, I'm plenty high for that, but it's funny because after I kind of looked back at his video, um, and chose the height that I wanted to set it at, I went ahead and did it. And then uh, I had sent him a message and he referred to me and he said, yeah, I said, I don't, I didn't measure it, but he goes, you know, if I did it again, I'd probably do it four inches <laughs> lower. Uh, so it won't be that hard to move it, uh, to lower those, um, arms if I have to, but I'm going to wait till I get the things up there and start working on the mock-up, which will probably be in the next three, four days to decide if that's too high or Goldilocks just right. Um, any pointers? No, I don't think so. Wear a mask. Obviously wear hearing protection. I was pretty good about that, but definitely when I'm doing that much metal work, um, a mask is in order. Um, and you know, I guess it goes without saying, think about the way that work is going to flow in your shop, which is ultimately why I decided to put these wing stands where I did, you know, uh, I think earlier in the video, I talked about wanting to maybe put them over in that third bay over there where the long benches are in this video. Um, but it would be really crowded up against that wall where I have, you know, rakes and all that kind of stuff. And, um, there was no way that I was going to be able to hang that stuff up over there without banging into the wings. Um, so it would be removing everything that's over there and moving it to a different location that would probably be even more inconvenient or putting it or instead building the wingspans where I did. This was where I had the most room to do it. And my only concern about doing it right here was I just wasn't sure if I would have enough workspace for my benches because it's really kind of like right in the middle of the room. And if it weren't for that attic ladder, I could have moved it closer to the to the back wall of the garage, but it actually works out pretty well. Um, in fact, um, recently, like uh, two days ago, maybe uh, the weather was terrible and I had parts to prime. So I was actually able to work in my shop and set up the priming table in that forward part of the garage under where that um, attic ladder is and still had plenty of room to move around. I don't think that it's going to change much. I mean, obviously I can walk right through between those stands right now. Once the wings are hanging up there, that will be different, but I did deliberately make sure that there's enough room on the ends to get around without any problem, without bumping into anything, or if I have to take anything off of those shelves, obviously I have to, that, um, I'm not going to be cramped for space. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to work out pretty good. I'm excited to get into it, um, a little bit further. The two most daunting tasks for me when it comes to the wing construction are the countersinks on the main spar. I'm done with those, the, the scary ones. Anyways, there are some, some sort of large countersinks that you have to do for, you mount like 120 nut plates and, uh, some of them, many of them are actually, no, you, you mount, uh, many more than that. 
You mount 120 nut plates just for the tank attachments, and those take deep, big countersinks, and you don't actually use a countersink um, pilot that that uses the same size hole that's drilled there. So when you, it's nerve wracking. I'll explain to it when we get to it. But believe me, that was something that I was concerned about. But it's done, and everything turned out well. And the other part that's intimidating that I'm really starting right now is um, prepping the wing ribs. And not because it's something that you're going to screw up. It's just a ton of very tedious work. And I I just want to get that part uh, over with. And that will begin in earnest tomorrow. Um, I, I suppose the expectation would be that the thing that would be intimidating to me would be building the tanks, but that's something I've actually been looking forward to. There's so much good information um, about how to do it um, that I'm confident that it will be messy, but um, I don't know. That's very exciting to me, you know, uh, building something that's going to have like one of the most valuable applications and getting this thing to fly. So, um, it's a major milestone that I'm looking forward to getting into. Um, I would imagine that beginning, that's probably still a good two weeks away. Um, once I get, um, the rib prep done. Hey, look at that. We made it to day five. Didn't think that was ever going to happen. Uh, so I'm back there working with my least favorite tool, the skill saw to cut out, um, the shape of a wing rib, um, for one end of the wing cradle here in the foreground though, just past the ladder, leaning up against the wall. That is the other cradle that's for the leading edges and for the tank construction. It's the same rib that I'm doing back here, except that I'm doing, uh, one larger piece, uh, like a three foot wide piece of <clears throat> plywood with two, um, with two templates cut out of it. Um, and the way that the ring, excuse me, the way that the wing cradle is set up is that the, um, the bottom portion of the wings will be facing outboard because as you kind of get to the later stages of wing construction, the last thing to go on is the bottom skins. So you have room to get in there and work on like, uh, aileron actuation and wiring and pedo static and whatever pedo, uh, all that kind of stuff that's still very far away from me. Um, yeah, so getting all of that done, um, I think here, yeah, I used, um, well now, now I'm cutting that the, the, uh, four by four that I screwed up, but it will be perfect for being the spine of this cradle. Uh, and this is another day of, uh, measure three times, cut twice, maybe measure five times, cut three times. Um, I, I did some framing construction during high school, but I'd never would have called myself a carpenter. And that was, you know, more than 30 years ago. This isn't a very difficult project and I pretty much stuck to the plans. Um, but the, the, the um, the angled pieces, the braces, probably two or three times when I was cutting those on one end, I cut the 45 degree angle on the wrong side. So, oh man, scrap wood. <laughs> uh, but it turned out okay. The The end that's facing us is where ultimately the, the spar end that mounts to the fuselage will rest on that. But there will be notches cut out so that it can fit down inside and, and not be at risk of being knocked off of there. Um, but yeah, this was, I don't know, four <laughs> hours. I, I can make work take a long time, uh, to get it done. Um, a few more screwed up cuts there, um, to finish up those cross braces. And then, uh, I'll take it back over to the other side, flip it over, put the casters on it and it's good to go. Um, it'll be a while till I need it. So it's currently inside my house. So I have some room to work in there. Um, and, uh, we don't see it yet, but I got some of that like foam sort of tubing used to insulate outside, outside pipes. And that's what I'm going to use for the padding, um, in those notches for the leading edges. Uh, 
I might have to widen those out a little bit. I thought I was pretty generous with it, but it seems pretty tight with the padding in there. So we'll see. But it uh, looks like day six is coming up here in just a second, and we'll be out of here. Hey, it's Sunday, uh, the 30th of April, 2023. Uh, just finished mowing the lawn. I haven't done anything airplane parts related in at least a week. And I wanted to give you an update on the workshop and, and why I haven't done any airplane parts building in that time. Um, I finished the empennage kit and it's time to start the wing kit. So I needed to refit my uh, shop for that workflow. So I've now moved, if you recall, the wing kit was in crates on the floor over there. Now it lives over here. All of the uh, empennage parts are in the spare bedroom. Uh, but I needed to build some fixtures for the wing build. So these four posts here that go from, from floor to ceiling are wing stands. Uh, this is where the wings are going to live mostly during construction. So these are all, and I'm proud to say, completely plumb and level across from one bracket to the other. All of these brackets had to be fabricated. They're all dead level. But once we put weight on them, <clears throat> it's sure to change that a little bit. So I opted to build these with uh, threaded rods so I can just take a wrench and, and change the length of that rod between these two brackets and that will like just minutely adjust, make fine adjustments to the level of that. So the wing jigs or wing stands rather, wing jigs aren't necessary uh, anymore with pre-punched kits, but that's what these essentially are. Those took quite a bit of time to build because there's quite a bit of fabrication involved and I'm not a fabricator, but I did it. Uh, all of these brackets, so the bars and then these uh, tabs that are this side, just some scrap uh, quarter inch aluminum angle that I had, these all had to be manufactured, conceived and manufactured in this workspace over here. Uh, and then right down here, this is a wing cradle. So when the wings are built, they will live in this. This end obviously will be where the outboard portion of the wing will sit down in those slots and then the spar will rest over here. There will be uh, a little notch cut out here and a little notch cut out here so that the spar can rest down in and in, in maybe a third or half of an inch notch um, so that there's no risk of the spar being bumped and knocking it out of the way. But I didn't want to put that in there yet until I actually have a partially or mostly constructed wing to be certain of what the dimensions will be at that point. <clears throat> this took a little bit of time, but it's rock solid and it's on casters and uh, it takes up a lot of space in the shop right now. It's probably going to live in the house or out there in my trailer um, until it's ready to be used. And then I took one of the crates that had held uh, all the wing skins and smaller parts and uh, threw some chicken wire on top and some braces uh, in the middle. And this is my new table for priming. What I had been doing for priming was with these two saw horses, um, just laying a big piece of cardboard over the top and doing that. Um, the problem with that is that I don't, always necessarily want to do priming inside of my garage. I would rather do it out there. And if there's a little bit of a breeze, there's a good chance that, that little piece of cardboard can get lifted up and dump all of those pretty parts on the ground. So this is just a better surface to do it on and a good use for this crate. Um, I have moved things a little bit. Uh, my workbenches now are over here. And I think you're already aware that these are two separate two foot by five foot benches on uh, casters so they can kind of be oriented in any particular way. Anyways, that's the uh, update on the workshop situation. Oh, one more thing I forgot. Um, one more fixture that I have to build, and that's what I'm going to be doing today with this pile of stuff right here. I'm going to be building this right here, which is just a very simple device to bend uh, the wing rib flanges to uh, 90 degrees. And it just, this is a process, bending these things to 90 degrees 
uh, using hand seamer could take days, whereas if you build one of these devices, take the time to build one of these devices, uh, you can have all of the rib flanges prepped and bent in a couple of hours. So anyways, that's the update on the workshop, April 30th, 2023. Wings start tomorrow, stay tuned. Last update on wing uh, building fixtures. I went ahead and built the uh, the flange bending tools. <clears throat> These rib flanges, um, when they come out of the forming block, are often not this to this flange web. They need to be 90 degrees. When they come out of the forming block, they're often not. So you have to go through all of the ribs, all of them, and correct that to get it back to 90 degrees. That's one part of a pretty extensive prep process for the ribs. And this tool uh, makes it much easier to do that. There's a back cut here of 11 degrees so that when you grab the rib and pull it in, it will spring back to 90. And so anyways, successful. I didn't do a half bad job. Pretty happy with it. That's it.